along with Mr. Arjun and Dr. Arjun Devrajan to the fifth session of our foundation course in palliative medicine. Today, we'll be continuing our uh, module on management of pain with uh, today's focus on methadone. And we have uh, our faculty, Dr. Sunil Kumar, uh, joining us back to walk us through the session. Even though sir is formally introduced uh, to the batch earlier, I hand over it to Dr. Arjun Devrajan to again welcome him back and for further session facilitation. Dr. Arjun, it is over to you. And good evening to all. Welcome uh, to the management of pain free session. Today, our uh, faculty will be Dr. Sunil Kumar, who is the Addition Director of Prime Institute of Palliative Sciences. He has an experience of 15 years in palliative medicine. He uh, has a diploma in palliative medicine yeah, from India and also in Cardiff. He has done master's MSc from uh, in palliative medicine from Cardiff University. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, good afternoon, everybody. <clears throat> Am I audible? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, so uh, we already discussed um, uh, some of the step three of yours in the last class. Uh, so we talked about uh, morphine and uh, tendon. Um, so today we are going to talk about uh, methadone. So methadone is uh, entirely different uh, from other opioids. Um, and uh, they need to know when methadone uh, was available uh, in India. Anybody know? Okay, <clears throat> so methadone, uh, methadone is uh, actually uh, came into Indian market um, a long back, but then uh, the indication was uh, as a substitution therapy for uh, opioid use disorder or addiction. But in 2017, uh, last month or so, uh, methadone uh, is used by uh, palliative care physicians uh, for pain management. And uh, we started using <coughs> methadone in 2018. So methadone has uh, two indications now. Uh, one is for uh, sub uh, um, substitution therapy for uh, opioid use disorder uh, or substance use disorder. And um, the other indication is as an analgesic. Okay, uh, so uh, I would uh, like you to go through this uh, patient story. So this is a young lady, a 30 year old uh, who is diagnosed with uh, Ebbing sarcoma. And uh, uh, it started as a, a small swelling in sacral area in 2016 and for which uh, she underwent radiotherapy as well as chemotherapy. And then uh, she was okay for uh, two years. But uh, then uh, she started to have pain on her low back uh, as well as on the legs. <clears throat> and because of the symptom, uh, the doctor advised them to take an MRI. And it showed um, uh, a, a, the disease is uh, extending uh, from S1 uh, to uh, S1 vertebral body um, and from the uh, sacrum, sacral area. And it is also compressing the nerve roots L5 and S1. Uh, and uh, PET scan showed uh, pleural metastasis also. Uh, so, with this uh, progression of the disease, uh, the oncologist told them um, no um, curative or palliative oncological intervention is possible at this time. But uh, her main problem was uh, the pain on her back and legs. Um, <clears throat> so you can see the uh, distribution of pain in this patient. Her uh, pain is starting at low back, uh, which she says as burning and, sh and shooting. And it is, um, she gets some relief by lying down. 
but any movement increases the pain uh, very severe pain then by then uh, so she her mobility is totally restricted she is unable to move and she was actually uh, living in the first floor of a home uh, so she is unable to uh, come out of that room uh, because of this severe pain and uh, her sleep is very much disturbed and you can see her pain in this uh, pain chart um which is uh, starting at the low back and going on to the uh, right leg uh, mainly and uh, the pain score which has written is at the pain at rest okay. uh, so uh, she was uh, uh, under uh, care of another palliative care physician uh, on 20th march she was started on uh, tablet morphine 10 mg q for and sos then amitriptyline <coughs> Amitriptyline 25 milligram HS, um, then uh, because uh, the tablet morphine as well as amitriptyline and many other uh, medications uh, with which she didn't had proper pain relief. Even she had toxic effects of uh, morphine. Uh, so uh, for getting proper analgesia. Uh, that treating palliative care physician, he was an anesthetist. So he, so he thought of putting an epidural analgesia. So on 26 uh, June, she was put on epidural analgesia with the injection of opiocaine and morphine. Uh, she had some relief uh, in, initially <laughs> for almost 18 hours. But as the days went on, uh, the relief uh, uh, was decreased. And uh, um, it came to a situation uh, that uh, uh, even uh, after uh, bolus doses of propia pain and morphine, uh, she didn't have any pain relief and she was in severe pain. But uh, you can see uh, the epidural was uh, uh, kept for uh, two months. Uh, they recited at uh, different uh, locations uh, for keeping this too long. Uh, but uh, because uh, it was not giving uh, pain relief, um, they uh, thought that uh, they will plan to take out the epidural. So uh, they also started oral morphine along with uh, the epidural uh, local anesthetics on 16-8. Uh, and uh, then after five days of starting morphine, uh, they removed uh, the epidural catheter and uh, the morphine dose was increased uh, to a morphine 14 40 milligram q for a center so yes tab amitriptyline 25 milligram meters uh, pregabalin 75 milligram meters patient uh, then had a satisfactory pain relief but she developed delirium and myoclonus uh, so uh, okay uh, so how are we or how will you manage pain of this patient Anybody has any idea? How are we going to pain of this patient? What can we do? Anybody? We can we can increase the dosage of morphine, right? Uh, you cannot increase the dose because uh, she already developed a delirium and myoclonus, which says says us that you should not increase the dose of uh, the opioid you are giving, and it can cause more complications if you are going to increase the dose. Any other suggestions from the team? Uh, BD dose of precabalin or uh, introduction of the patches. Yeah. Or... Yeah. Yeah, that 
uh, that can be an option. Uh, uh, what page uh, do you want to start? Maybe a fentanyl patch. Okay. Uh, so what uh, would be the equivalent fentanyl patch uh, of this dose of morphine? Anybody? Anybody can answer. What would be the equivalent fentanyl patch? For this dose of morphine, she is specific. What is the potency of morphine uh, pendulum compared to morphine? 100 times more potent. Yeah, 100 times more potent. And uh, I remember that uh, I told you, you have to remember only this uh, dose of morphine is equivalent to this um, mm. dose of energy. What was that? One. Okay. So we have two answers in the chat box. Dr. Okay. Nirajan 25 microgram per hour. And uh, one bubble says 100 microgram per hour. Okay, uh, I don't know because uh, both of them might be right because they might have answered for different skills. Uh, so, uh, 60 milligram of morphine is equivalent to 25 microgram per hour tendon in fats. Okay, uh, so uh, this patient is receiving uh, 240 milligram of morphine, uh, 40 into 6, that is 240. Uh, so, um, so if you calculate that way, uh, 60 milligram uh, into 4 is 240, isn't it? So, 25 yes. microgram into 4 is equal to 100 microgram per hour. So, that's the right answer. 100 microgram per hour uh, would be the equivalent fentanyl patch uh, in this patient. Okay. Uh, so that's an option. Uh, are there any other options? Uh, so Dr. Switching Shah, onto a different opioid. Yeah. So Shaheen has an, uh, answered as lumbar symptomatectomy. And Dr. Karthik says methadone. Okay. Uh, lumbar uh, symbolic dog. Um, I'm not sure about that because uh, uh, with the uh, uh, local anesthetic, epidural local anesthetic. Uh, she didn't had, uh, she didn't had uh, proper pain relief. So lumbar uh, sympathetic block, uh, lumbar sympathetic. Uh, is it going to be beneficial? I'm not sure. <coughs> and it is uh, mostly uh, done for patients who has uh, vascular pain. because uh, the vascular uh, the vascularity of the lower limb is, uh, uh, is under control of uh, uh, sympathetic uh, lumbar sympathetic plexus okay uh, so um, switching opioids is uh, one option uh, and you can switch to fentanyl uh, or uh, another uh, Opioid is methadone. Okay. Uh, so, why should we, what is the type of pain this patient is experiencing? Anybody can answer. Nociceptive and neuropathic. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, it can be both. Uh, the local pain at the back might be nociceptive. But uh, burning, shooting, uh, those all indicates that uh, it is uh, neuropathic pain. And uh, the distribution of pain, uh, which uh, shows uh, which is uh, on the back of the leg uh, coming uh, to the foot, uh, which indicates uh, it is a neuropathy. So uh, probably a combination of uh, both pains, but uh, mostly neuropathic. Okay. 
so now uh, we will see um, uh, about uh, methadone. Uh, so methadone is a combination of uh, uh, two isomers known as s methadone and r methadone. So uh, whatever uh, the preparation available in the market is a combination of this as s methadone and r methadone. And uh, which uh, receptor agonist is morphine? On which receptor morphine acts? Yeah, yeah, I can see. Yeah, mu. It's mu. yeah, it's mu. Uh, morphine is a mu receptor agonist. So uh, you have to understand that the opioids which acts on mu receptor is the potent opioids. But in case of methadone, it not only acts on mu receptor. It also acts on kappa and delta also. Okay, so it acts on all the opioid receptor as an agonist. In addition to this, it is also an NMDA antagonist. So NMDA antagonist means n methyl d aspartate receptor antagonist. So which is the other NMDA antagonist do you know? Which is the other NMDA antagonist? Which is used commonly? <clears throat> um, naloxone and naltrexone is not uh, not NMDA antagonist. It is opioid antagonist. Okay. Naloxone and naltrexone is opioid antagonist. But the right answer is ketamine. Ketamine is a useful NMD antagonist, which is used uh, by anesthetist. Okay, so methadone also has NMD antagonistic activity. Then uh, it also acts like uh, tricyclic antidepressants. So tricyclic antidepressants inhibits the reuptake of noradrenaline and serotonin. So methadone also acts uh, that way. So methadone has three mechanisms. Action. It acts on all the opioid receptors as agonist. It acts as an NMD antagonist. It inhibits the reuptake of noradrenaline and serotonin. So what is the use of uh, tricyclic antidepressants in uh, pain management? Where do you use tricyclic antidepressants? Where do you use NMD? Neuro, neuropathic pain. Yeah, to treat neuropathic pain. <clears throat> NMD antagonist? Like ketamine? Post surgical pain. Post surgical pain. Any other indications? Patients who has uh, chronic pain with central sensitization. Okay, uh, so when uh, pain is there for a long time, patients uh, will develop something called a central sensitization. The patient will have pain uh, even to touch, um, and uh, the pain will be uh, the pain might have started at one point, but uh, it will extend to uh, other dermatomes also. Uh, so these are few features of central sensitization. Uh, so uh, ketamine is used to treat uh, that type of pain also, and also it is uh, so it is uh, useful to treat neuropathic pain also. Uh, so you can see uh, this uh, then uh, methadone also should be a, um, should be a good medication to treat that type of pain also neuropathic pain. Okay. Uh, so these are the three advantages or three mechanisms of action which makes methadone a peculiar opioid. 
but it also has another problem it's a problem that it inhibits the human either a go go related gene that is x e r g human either a go go related gene so h r g is there in all the smooth muscles but it's most abundant in cardiac smooth muscle so when it blocks h r g it uh, increases the qt interval and which can lead on to tau sada points which is a fatal arrhythmia which can lead to death sudden death okay so uh, that is one uh, serious side effect of methadone so let's look at uh, the clinical impact uh, due to various mechanism action so it acts on opioid receptor as an agonist so it acts on all the opioid receptor as an agonist so uh, definitely it will produce uh, analgesic effect uh, but you know that uh, the side effects of opioids is also due to its action on opioid receptors so it might produce uh, the um, side effects and toxic effects uh, of all the other opioids like constipation no see how many urinary incontinence proritis and very rarely respiratory depression so it produces an analgesic effect along with other side effects then you can see it also acts as an nmda antagonist so what is the um, one minute okay uh, so it has uh, acts as an nmda antagonist uh, you can see the uh, picture here and uh, there are four patients uh, and uh, um, on the x axis it is the dose of morphine that each patient is taking patient b is taking about uh, 1500 mg of morphine patient c about uh, 2500 mg of morphine per day and b Uh, 9000 mg of morphine per day and patient a 11000 mg of uh, morphine per day uh, so some of you might be uh, having experience uh, with morphine uh, so what is the maximum dose of morphine that you have used in your clinical practice you can uh, give your answer in the chat box <clears throat> 30 mg for hourly okay anybody else has uh, used uh, morphine okay uh, so usually most of the patients uh, pain will be relieved with uh, uh, small doses of morphine like uh, 5 to 10 mg or 5 to 20 mg of morphine for hourly but some patients um, might need more than that dose and very rarely some patients would need hundreds of mg of morphine um, so i have used for 50 mg every 4 hour uh, for a patient with uh, ca colon um, but i know uh, my one of my colleague has used up to 600 650 mg um, every 4 hour mm-hmm. so like this um, this patient has used up to 12000 mg of morphine so why um, this patients need to use uh, such large amounts of morphine what is the reason behind that so it is due to uh, tolerance uh, sometimes tolerance can develop to opioids so what is tolerance tolerance anybody
anybody? Uh, suppose uh, a patient has a uh, a patient has pains for ten beta, and you are giving five milligram of morphine. The pain came down to two by ten. Okay, but after two weeks, uh, the patient's pain increased. So you stepped up the dose of morphine to ten milligram per hour daily to get the same pain relief for two by ten. After some time, you need to increase the dose of morphine. Um, okay, to get the same pain. Relief. So to get the same effect, you need to increase the dose of medication. Uh, that's what happens in yeah. Uh, increase dose for the same effect over time. Yes, that's correct. Diminished response over the course of repeated exercise. So that's also correct. But uh, for understanding it simply, uh, you just uh, keep the example, what I told you. Uh, you need to increase the dose of medication to get the uh, same effect. Okay. Uh, so probably all these patients uh, is receiving this much uh, higher amount of opioids because of the tolerance. Okay. So in all these patients, um, the researchers started on 10 milligram of methadone every eight hours. That is 30 milligram every day. <clears throat> okay. Regardless of the dose of morphine, they were on. So for patient who is on 1000 milligram, patient is on 2000 milligram, patient is on uh, 9,000 milligram and uh, for 12,000 milligram, all the patients were started on 30 milligram of methadone per day and all the patients had very good pain relief. So this indicates uh, the importance of methadone uh, or importance of NMDA receptors in the development of tolerance. So methadone will prevent and reverse that tolerance. Okay. So Methadone can prevent and reverse the tolerance, and it also has additional uh, effect on neuropathic pain because of the NMDA antagonist. Then, as we told, uh, it acts like tricyclic antidepressants. So, you know, tricyclic antidepressants uh, are useful to treat neuropathic pain. But there is another problem when uh, methadone is used uh, with. Uh, the medications which is shown here, it can produce a syndrome known as serotonin syndrome. This is not only uh, applicable to the methadone, but even this is applicable to uh, tramadol. Uh, so tramadol also has a tricyclic antidepressant like exclusive. In addition to opioid, uh, uh, in addition to mu opioid receptor agonist, tramadol also acts like a tricyclic antidepressant. So, methadone also acts like tricyclic antidepressant. So, if you give it along with the uh, flow of ketin, sertraline, paroxetine, uh, imipramine, amitriptyline, it can cause something called as serotonin syndrome. Okay. So, the risk varies uh, between the uh, medications which I have shown. The lowest risk is with uh, metazapine, not triptyline, and highest risk with uh, flow of ketin, sertraline, paroxetine. So, uh, these are the symptoms uh, and signs of uh, serotonin syndrome. The patients can have cognitive changes. Even the patient uh, can develop coma. Uh, they might have autonomic instability like nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, tachycardia, uh, increased temperature. The neuromuscular changes like uh, tremor, uh, brisk reflexes, hyperreflexia, <coughs> for wheel rigidity, seizures, etc. Uh, so, uh, if uh, your patient is on methadone and uh, if you are uh, uh, giving uh, maybe tricyclic antidepressants along with that and you see that patient is agitated, increased temperature and the patient has tremor, just think whether it is due to serotonin syndrome. Um, uh, uh, um, I think... Uh, the serotonin syndrome is uh, more common with uh, MAO inhibitors, monoamine oxidase inhibitors, which uh, people usually don't use now. Okay, 
so the next uh, the uh, three action which we already talked about uh, action on opioid receptor action on nmda nmda receptor and uh, acting like a tricyclic antidepressant those were all beneficial effects of methadone but uh, this is uh, the action on human either agogo related disease <clears throat> is something uh, which can produce serious side effects called tosadepoins okay and uh, uh, because of this uh, serious side effect uh, many people uh, fear uh, to use methadone and there are <clears throat> many uh, cardiac risk factors uh, if you are going to use methadone and uh, be careful uh, the patients with uh, um, these risk factors like electrolyte abnormalities uh, older age female gender structural heart disease uh, are you giving any other qt prolonging prolonging medications uh, then uh, a QT, corrected QT interval more than 450 milliseconds and uh, methadone dose more than 45 milligram per day. There are many risk factors. Okay. Uh, so uh, we told that um, methadone can produce uh, toss at a point. It increases the QT interval and produces um, the toss at a point. But uh, most of these studies uh, were on patients who are uh, getting methadone for oral substitution therapy. And usually these patients will be on hundreds of milligrams of methadone. Uh, so you already saw that uh, one of the risk factors is the dose of methadone above 45 milligrams per uh, uh, day, 45 milligram per day. But those patients who are on oral substitution therapy, they take uh, hundreds of milligrams. So the, definitely they have a risk of developing more QT uh, prolongation as well as uh, developing uh, thousand points. Uh, so uh, this is a study conducted by MD Anderson Cancer Center uh, with uh, oral methadone. Uh, they selected uh, 100 uh, cancer patients who were started on oral methadone and they took ECG uh, at baseline. Then after two weeks of starting uh, methadone, then at four weeks and eight weeks. And uh, median methadone dose was uh, 23 milligrams per day. Uh, and uh, uh, when they looked at ECG, uh, they couldn't find out uh, any events like uh, tosside points or ventricular fibrillation. Um, uh, so this study uh, says uh, if the dose of methadone used uh, is low, the chance of uh, producing tosside points or ventricular fibrillation is very very low uh, so we can use it safely if you use low dose of method and uh, there are uh, many medications which can increase the QT interval and produce tosada points when you give it along with methadone so you can see these are the medications which we usually use in palliative care uh, there are uh, macrolide antibodies like acetromycin, clarithromycin, erythromycin, then fluoroquinolones like suprafloxacin, levofloxacin, all those medications. Uh, then uh, SSRI, citalopram, uh, acetylopram, uh, fluoxetin, sertraline, 5 ht 3 antagonists like ondansetone. All this has definite risk of increasing the QT interval and producing tosada points if you give it along with methadone. Uh, so this is something which we need to be careful because these are the medications which uh, uh, palliative care physicians usually use. Okay. And uh, now we will move on to uh, pharmacokinetics of methadone. Uh, methadone is uh, absorbed from the upper small intestine like morphine, but um, um, uh, compare, uh, comparing uh, morphine, uh, methadone uh, can be uh, given sublingually, whereas morphine is not advisable to give sublingually. <clears throat> and you can see 30 to 36 percentage uh, absorption is uh, there with uh, sublingual. 
and it can also be uh, given correctly. In India, we have only order preparation, but uh, and uh, US they have both uh, injectable as well as oral forms. Uh, so after absorption, it goes into the uh, blood and it will be seen uh, in the uh, vascular compartment about two to four hours. Okay. And after that, uh, you, uh, just see this that. So when you administer uh, for that first two to four hours, it will be uh, seen in the blood. But after two to four hours, it immediately disappears into the tissue binding sites. So these are the tissue binding sites. And when tissue binding sites are saturated, then um, some of the methadone will be released into the systemic circulation. Okay. So um, first of all, the tissue binding sites need to be saturated with methadone to continuously release methadone into the uh, vascular uh, compartment. Uh, so uh, this saturation will take about uh, five to seven days. So the, um, so uh, uh, what do you understand from this? Anybody? Anybody can unmute and speak. Yes, stable uh, systemic level uh, in seven days. Cumulative dosage after one week. Loading dose uh, required to be high. Um, yes. Uh, to achieve stable train relief will take uh, seven days. Yeah, that's what we need to understand. And when you start a patient on methadone, it will take about five to seven days to have stable pain relief or sustained pain. Relief. <clears throat> uh, so it is not like morphine, whereas we can increase the dose of morphine every 24 hours. Whereas in case of methadone, you have to wait for five to seven days before you increase the dose because methadone will take um, about five to seven days and five half life is uh, the time required for stable blood concentration in case of opioids so in case of uh, um, morphine it is four hours half life is four hours so uh, one day is enough uh, before increasing the dose of methadone whereas in case of uh, um, methadone uh, the half life is about uh, 22 hours. So roughly you can take it as um, one day. So five half life is five days. <laughs> but studies has uh, found that uh, in patients who are elderly and patients with uh, uh, liver uh, derangement, then they may take uh, more than uh, five to seven days, even up to 14 days, up to 10 to 14 days. So in patients who are elderly and uh, patients with liver problem, it is better to wait for 10 to 14 days before increasing the dose of methadone. Okay, uh, then uh, metabolism. Um, so like uh, morphine, it is also metabolized in liver, but uh, here um, the metabolism takes place by cytochrome P and cells. And uh, the, uh, the main cytochrome enzymes involved are cytochrome P2B6, 2D6, 2C19. And uh, you also have to understand that there are many medications which also um, metabolize by the same uh, cytochrome enzymes. So because of this, uh, the methadone is going to have many drug interactions. Either uh, it can uh, either uh, the medications can decrease the metabolism of morphine, uh, sorry, metabolism of methadone, or increase the metabolism of methadone. Both can happen. <clears throat> so 
these are some medications uh, which uh, are not, uh, which have cytochrome p inhibitors. So they will inhibit the cytochrome p so that more methadon will be available in the blood. So examples are grapefruit. What is grapefruit? It is not the grape which is available for us. It is it is a type of citrus fruit. fruit. Okay. And then protease inhibitors. What are protease inhibitors? Anybody? Anti-HIV drugs. Yeah. <coughs> Antiretroviral medications. Then as well, antifungal like fluconazole, ketoconazole, etc. Cyclosporin, macrolide antibiotics. Then amiodarone and the non dsp calcium channel blockers. Uh, so these are medications which inhibit cytochrome and thereby increase the methadone availability. So when you give this medication, be careful. Um, you need to um, uh, either reduce the dose of methadone or you have to find out some alternative uh, for uh, uh, macrolides. Uh, you want to give macrolides and you know that it is going to increase the dose of methadone. So, uh, see whether uh, other antibiotics can be given, like uh, amoxicillin or something which doesn't have much interaction with methadone. And there are uh, cytochrome P inducers, <laughs> which can reduce the dose of methadone. Yeah. So these are phenytoin, smoking, uh, phenobarbital, off carbocepin, rifampicin, carbocepin, St. John's water, etc. And uh, when these medications are given along with the methadone, uh, the sometimes the patient can have more pain because uh, the dose of methadone or the concentration of methadone available will be less in the blood. <clears throat> and uh, uh, as I told you, um, these are the important medications uh, which are cytochrome P inhibitors as well as cytochrome P inducers. But there are a lot of other medications. Uh, which can actually interact with uh, cytochrome P, and you can see a list here. Okay. And uh, methadone is uh, excreted mainly through bowel, uh, and a minor uh, part uh, through kidney. Uh, so it is uh, methadone can be used uh, to manage pain in patients with uh, renal failure. So we know that the morphine actually excreted through renal root. And uh, uh, in patients who have CKD, uh, there will be accumulation of morphine, which can produce neurotoxicity. And uh, some people advise even to avoid uh, morphine, but uh, in India, we cannot uh, avoid morphine, even in renal failure. You have to use uh, with the reduced dose and the increased, increasing the pacing between two doses. <clears throat> but methadone is, actually a useful medication uh, which can be uh, prescribed in patients with renal failure. So what is the duration of action of methadone? In case of morphine, it is four hours. What is the duration here? 22 hours. Uh, yeah, uh, but uh, uh, mostly half-life would be the time uh, that is uh, and, uh, that is taken as duration of action. But in case of methadone, uh, the useful uh, 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 duration of action is 8 to 12 hours. So you have to administer it every 12 hours or at least 8 hours. So now we want to appropriate candidates for methadone. For which patients you are going to start methadone? So methadone is used as an adjuvant. So can anybody tell me what is an adjuvant? <clears throat> an additional drug. Additional drug? A drug which can be used in addition to the routine uh, painkiller which is going on. Yeah. Okay. Um, Supplements the function of main drugs. Yeah. 
drug used to enhance the action of another yes yeah okay uh, so here uh, what you uh, mean by action in case of methadone is that uh, in uh, some patients um, uh, they are on opioids like morphine and most of time they have good pain relief but at night they have to uh, wake up to take uh, another dose of morphine because of pain uh, in such patients, if you give a small dose of methadone, like 2.5 milligram, they might have uh, get good pain relief. So in such situation, when it is used along with other opioids in small doses, it is known as an adjunct. <clears throat> okay, so that's one indication to start methadone. And pain refractory to other opioids, like you have started patient on uh, morphine, then uh, tried with the tramadol, uh, that means this pain is refractory to other opioids. So that's an another indication to start methadone. Then uh, we already told that patients with uh, significant renal impairment, if they have pain, methadone is a uh, choice. The need for long-acting opioid and uh, because of, uh, because its duration of action is eight to twelve hours, and high opioid tolerance, uh, which we already. Uh, so, uh, in the four uh, patients, uh, the, we talked about NMDA receptors and its um, role in developing tolerance. <clears throat> and rarely, um, sometimes, uh, opioids can also produce opioid induced hyperalgesia. Uh, uh, so, this is a rare situation, but uh, again, uh, this can occur. And in such situation, uh, methadone is. Choice. Then poorly controlled opioid induced uh, adverse effects. Uh, mean, uh, suppose uh, patient uh, is on um, is on morphine and they are developing delirium, myoclonus, uh, etc. Then uh, methadone is a choice uh, to switch. Okay, and if the patient is allergic to other opioids then again, methadone can be used. <clears throat> so these are a few indications in which you can uh, actually use methadone and uh, can uh, find it useful. Uh, um, who are the inappropriate candidates uh, to start methadone? If there is a family history of sudden unexplained death. Okay, uh, so patients with um, Tossed at points, uh, they might uh, die suddenly, and there is no cause of death. Uh, so, if uh, the, if there is any unexplained uh, sudden death in the family, and if there is congenital uh, QT prolongation syndrome, and if corrected QT interval is uh, more than 500 milliseconds, uh, what is the uh, normal uh, QT interval? Corrected QT interval, normal corrected QT interval. 340 to 350 depends, uh, different for males and females. It's actually uh, 450 for males and so 460 so for uh, females. Okay. So and if the patient has poor cognitive function, uh, they will not be able to give us uh, proper uh, pain history. So in such patients, don't start methadone. And if the patient do not have a reliable caregiver, then again, it is an inappropriate candidate to start methadone. Then uh, we know that uh, methadone will take about five to seven days to give proper pain relief. So in acute pain crisis, uh, methadone is not used. So how do you monitor the patient uh, when uh, you start uh, patient on methadone? So most important thing is uh, the monitoring parameters uh, should be aligned with the goals of care. <clears throat> that means if a patient is on, uh, if the patient is uh, stage four uh, disease and uh, he is not on any oncological interventions uh, and they have opted only for comfort care, in such patients, we need not uh, do much investigation. But if the patient is you know, on curative treatment, then we need to do certain investigations like ECG. So when you 
before you start patient blood methadone do an ecg to find out uh, what is the uh, correct qp level then electrolytes uh, potassium calcium and magnesium because hypomagnesemia hypokalemia and uh, hypocalcemia it all can produce prolonged qt level <clears throat> then ecg need to be repeated after 2 to 4 weeks of starting methadone and when the methadone dose reaches 30 to 40 mg and again when the dose reaches to 100 mg and if you feel that there are new risk factors uh, uh, maybe in, you have introduced a new medication which can actually increase the QT interval then you can uh, do an ECG okay so if the patient is undergoing curative treatment uh, you should be monitoring the patient with ECG serially and also um, the electrolytes. Uh, if you think uh, there is a chance um, the patient can have hypokalemia, hypomagnesemia, hypocalcemia, then you have to investigate that for that. <clears throat> and this is the methadone uh, available uh, in India, both uh, tablet as well as syrup. So uh, the tablet is five milligram, and the syrup uh, again uh, five milligram in one ml. Five milligram in one ml. Uh, the trade name is Arnet. Arnet. Okay. Okay. Now uh, we will move on to how we can convert a patient from an opioid to methadone. If you look at the literature, there are many methods uh, by which you can uh, convert an opioid to methadone. Uh, but um, uh, when we started methadone in 2018, uh, there were uh, no doctors who are experienced uh, with uh, methadone in India. Uh, so we took help from uh, abroad. And um, uh, at that time, uh, we had uh, an article published in Journal of Pain and Symptom Management, which is known as White Paper Consensus Method by Hospice and Palliative Care Physicians, which is a very simple way to start with the one. Okay, so uh, that's what we are following. Uh, so this is what uh, conversion looks like uh, according to the uh, White Paper Consensus Method. So if the patient is uh, opioid may or if the patient is taking less than 60 milligram of oral morphine per day, then you can start with uh, 2 milligram to 7.5 milligram per day. Okay. 2 milligram to 7.5 milligram per day. And if the patient is taking 60 to 199 milligram of oral morphine equivalent per day, and if the age is less than 65 years, the conversion ratio is. 10 is to 1. So, uh, suppose a patient is taking 100 milligram of uh, morphine and uh, age is less than age 40. So, what would be the um, dose of methadone that patient needs? 10 milligram. Yeah, 10 milligram. So, that's what 10 is to 1 means. And uh, if the patient is taking more than 200 milligram of or morphine equivalent per day, or if the patient is more than 65 years old, the conversion ratio is 20 is 1. Okay. And <coughs> suppose a patient is taking 2000 milligram of um, morphine equivalent per day, what would be the uh, equivalent uh, dose of methadone? 200. 200. 2000 milligram of oral morphine and the patient is taking 100 100 mg age of the patient depends on the age yeah uh, it's uh i it, suppose it is uh, less than 65 years then 100 100 you can see if the patient is taking more than 200 milligram, 100 milligram. or 65 Okay, so 200. This patient is taking uh, 2000 milligram. 
Hmm. So it is twenty to one. But Yeah. there is another plus. Uh, you can see, regardless of the conversion factor, the maximum initial dose is only thirty to forty milligram per day. So never start more than thirty to forty milligram of methadone initially. Okay. So patient is taking two thousand milligram, uh, three thousand milligram, whatever it may be. You need to start the patient only on. 30 to 40 milligram per day as an initial dose. And you can always uh, titrate after uh, five to seven days. And uh, how much dose you can increase? Uh, suppose the patient is taking a uh, total dose of methadone, less than 30 milligram per day, and you feel that you have to increase the dose. then you can increase five milligram per day and then wait for another five to seven days. Okay. And if the patient is taking more than 30 milligrams per day, you can increase 10 milligram per day and wait for another five to seven days before you increase that. And we are moving on to uh, some patient stories. <clears throat> So this is a 37 year old man uh, who uh, developed a carcinoma of the buccal mucosa in 2018. And he also had a, a second primary papillary carcinoma of the thyroid. And he underwent surgery and radiation. But in 2019, he had 11 to normal recurrence for which he underwent surgery. <coughs> and uh, his main problem at that time was severe pain. And uh, uh, this is the description uh, of the pain. He says pain starts uh, from inside the left ear, it goes to the lateral side of the forehead, then to submental region, and it is pricking type of pain, ten by ten. And you can see uh, this is uh, the description uh, fits um, to the neuropathic pain, and uh, this is the uh, area he is describing. The mandibular uh, nerve innovation. Um, so it is a neuropathic pain. <clears throat> so the treating team did an extra oral mandibular nerve block. Um, they did it three times, but the patient didn't have any pain. Uh, so um, then they tried with injection morphine. That I uh, did titration with injection morphine, but it reduced toxicities. So they need to come down with morphine and they started on tab morphine like this, 10 milligram, 15 milligram, 10 milligram, 30 milligram, and 10 milligram soils. Even with this dose, <coughs> he had uh, toxicities like delirium and myoclonus. Then they uh, tried him on various adverts like uh, tricyclic antidepressants, uh, figabarin, etc. No pain relief. So this was the uh, medication the patient was taking. Tab morphine, 10 milligram, 15 milligram, 10 milligram, and 30 milligram. Tab antipressal, 40 milligram body. Ciproflux, 500 milligram BD. Acetylopram, 10 milligram BD. Sarashi peptide is 100. Diclofenac patch, one every day. Tab paracetamol, 650 milligram, one SOS. <laughs> so are there any indications to start a methadone in this patient. Are there any indication to start methadone? Yes, sir. Seems like oh, Sorry, we cannot hear you, yes, Dr. Sri Ramo. Your voice is breaking. Yeah, I can see there are some comments in the chat. Toxicity with morphine. Yeah. Any other indication? Yes. Everybody is talking about uh, morphine toxicity. Any anything else? As an adjunct. 
Okay. So one is, uh, it is complex uh, neuropathic pain. Okay. Uh, so we told that uh, because of its uh, tricyclic antidepressant like action, as well as NMD and agonistic property, um, methadone can be used uh, to treat neuropathic pain. So one is that. <clears throat> and as uh, many of you have told, uh, morphine toxicities, that's another indication. And it is a refractory pain for other opioids. They have tried with uh, um, morphine and tramadol, which is available to them. So it was not responded. So that's a, uh, you can say it is refractory to other opioids. So these are the three indications <coughs> to start methadone in this patient. Okay, you, um, you plan to start uh, patient on methadone, but before starting on methadone, what all will you do? Electrolytes. ECG. Serum electrolytes. Yeah. ECG, serum electrolytes. Anything else? Cardiac history, yes. Yes. ECG, potassium, calcium, magnesium. And lastly, drugs. Yeah. What all other drugs he is taking? Yeah. The important, you have to ask the patient whether there is a history of sudden unexplained death in the family. That's an important question. Okay. Anything else? Drug history. Is there any reliable caregiver? Okay. Drug history is important. Yeah. Uh, but these are the two uh, questions that uh, you have to ask even before you start facing your method. <clears throat> So, do we need to do an EC and electrolytes in this patient? What do you think? <coughs> what is the goals of care in this patient? Is it curative? Is he under curative treatment or is he under comfortable care? He is having two uh, primaries and uh, nothing is responding to chemotherapy or any other uh, oncological intervention. So he is a patient who is under uh, comfortable care only. So we need not do actually any investigations. But when you start methadone for the first time, it is always better to do an ECG and electrolytes. Okay. Do you have any concerns with the present medication? These are the medications the patient was on. Do you find any problem with this medication? Acetylopra, Vena says acetylopra. Okay. Ciprofloxacin. Yeah. Yeah. Those are uh, two medications which has actually um, severe interaction with methadone. But uh, even uh, pantoprazole has some interaction with uh, methadone. Okay. But acetylopram and ciprofloxacin which has uh, severe interactions. Uh, so we need to calculate the dose of methadone uh, for this patient. So please calculate the dose of methadone that you are going to give this patient.
10 milligram anjali says uh, 30 milligram per day and the doctor says 10 milligram <coughs> okay 5 mg bd 5 mg bd and nilakshi says 6.5 milligram okay yeah, so let's see uh, how much uh, dose uh, of methadone uh, this patient needs So what is the oral morphine equivalent uh, this patient is taking? It is 65 milligrams and 10, 15, 10, 30. This is what uh, he is taking. So total he is taking 65 milligrams. So what would be the conversion ratio in this patient? 10 is to 1. 6.5. Yeah, 10 is to 1. Yeah. Uh, his age is 39 and uh, oral morphine uh, equivalent is between 60 to 199 that is 65 milligram so the conversion ratio is <clears throat> 1 by 10 so 65 divided by 10 it is 6.5 milligrams <clears throat> and how do you give 6.5 milligram if uh, you have only tablet methadone you can give a 2.5 milligram bd or if syrup is available give 3 milligram BD or even 2 milligram TID. Okay. So, is it enough? Do you need to give any other medication along with uh, methadone? How long will it take to give proper pain relief? 7 days, sir. Yeah, 5 to 7 days. So, what are you going to do uh, till then? Shupriya says adjuncts. Harsha says continue morphine. Okay. Actually, we need to continue morphine. Okay. So, whatever the dose of morphine you are giving, uh, continue it. <clears throat> but it is not on a regular basis, but on a SOS basis. Okay. So, for this patient, he was taking total 65 milligram of oral morphine. So it is 10 milligram for our day, isn't it? So you can give tab morphine 10 milligram for hourly on an SOS basis. It is not 10 milligram for hourly and SOS. It is 10 milligram for hourly SOS. That means, uh, suppose at 6 a.m. you give you give uh, methadone 2.5 milligram. Okay. And at that time, you will ask the patient, do you have pain now? Patient says, yes, I have pain. So you will give 10 milligram of morphine. And at 10 a.m., you will again ask the patient, do you have pain? Patient says, no, no, I don't have pain. So don't give morphine uh, at 10 a.m. Again at 2 p.m., patient says, no pain. Don't give morphine. 6 p.m., patient says, I have pain. Give 10 milligram. So that's what uh, 10 milligram Q4H SOS means. Okay, so this patient's uh, prescription will be like this, syrup methadone or tab met uh, methadone along with a tab morphine, Q4H on an SOS basis, <laughs> then <laughs> paracetamol uh, instead of uh, ciprofloxacin, it was changed to amoxicillin, <clears throat> acetylopram was stopped, uh, it was actually not needed, the patient was not under any clinical depression. Okay, <laughs> so this patient, uh, this is an uh, uh, the patient stories uh, which uh, I'm discussing here uh, is our experience. <clears throat> and this patient was uh, in very severe pain. Uh, he was in a peculiar uh, position with uh, his uh, head down in the bed. Uh, and um, um, st uh, after starting methadone, uh, by the third day, uh, he had uh, uh, somewhat uh, good relief for pain. <clears throat> and with five days, he had very good pain. And he lived uh, pain free uh, till his death. So, the uh, next patient, again, we, uh, this is a 39 year old woman who is diagnosed with carcinoma of the pancreas with. Uh, liver, lung, and uh, splenic metastasis. Uh, she was undergoing chemotherapy and received five cycles, but 
um, the disease was not responding. So the oncologist asked them to stop the chemotherapy. <clears throat> then he advised um, for palliative care, which uh, she was receiving from the oncologist himself. And this is the uh, pain uh, that she described. You can see pain starting at the left lateral chest and abdomen, which uh, goes to her back. <clears throat> And she says uh, uh, it is a uh, stabbing type of pain. And uh, mostly the score is 10 by 10. And uh, <clears throat> with morphine, tramadol, and paracetamol, it comes down to 8 by 10. And this was a lady uh, who had uh, uh, two uh, children, younger children, uh, and uh, husband. And she was actually very um, depressed. And because um, uh, she says that uh, uh, at this uh, age, I need to look after my children and husband. But now I am unable to do anything because of this pain. And she was unable to go out uh, of the room because of the severe pain. <clears throat> and uh, you can see these are the medication uh, she was getting from her oncologist. Tire morphine, 20 milligram uh, every six hourly. Injection tramadol 100 milligram IV three times daily. Paracetamol one gram six hourly. Gabapentin 100 milligram TID. Amitriptyline 25 milligram HS. Desocodyl 5 milligram 2 HS. And with this, she had myoclonic jabs. So, how do you give pain relief for this patient? Is this a patient uh, of whom we can start on methadone? If so, what are the indications? What are the indications? Myoclonus on the neuropathic okay. pain. On the neuropathic yeah, neuro pain. yeah. Toxicity is to morphine, myoclon, uh, yeah. Then um, neuropathic pain is another indication. And you can also say pain is refractory to other opioids. This patient is on both uh, morphine and tramadol, which is not right, uh, but uh, it is refractory to other opioids. So these are the indications by which you can start this patient on methadone. Okay. So any investigations do you need to do? Actually not needed because uh, she is not receiving any curative uh, oncological interventions. <clears throat> okay. So, what is the dose of uh, methadone uh, we need to give in this patient? <clears throat> so these are the medications she is receiving. Please calculate the dose of methadone. T times G. I can see Dr. Nidaxi and uh, many others have already calculated, calculated the dose. So fast. Eight MC. Okay, let's see. So uh, he, uh, she was taking tab morphine, 20 milligram every six hour day. So the dose of morphine is 20 into four. That is 80 milligram. She is also taking another opioid, isn't it? You also need to convert that opioid into oral morphine equivalent. She is taking tramadol. So tramadol need to be converted into morphine. So uh, she is taking 100 milligram TID. So 300 milligram of tramadol, uh, which is equivalent to 30 milligram of oral morphine. So the total dose of oral morphine equivalent she is taking is 
total 110 milligram okay <coughs> and the conversion ratio is uh, again age is 639 and uh, the dose she is taking between 60 and 199 so the conversion factor is 10 is to 1 so methadone dose would be 11 milligram so you can either start with the tab method on 5.5 milligram <clears throat> yeah or uh, even syrup uh, method on 5 milligram baby <clears throat> so do you have any concerns with present medications any medications can have interactions Amitriptyline, yeah. Amitriptyline can have some interaction with the methadone. Uh, that's true. And um, uh, if you have taken an ECG, uh, then uh, you can see whether what uh, what is the QT interval. Uh, if you have not taken, uh, then uh, you can assume that the patient is on small dose of amitriptyline, which might not cause much problem. So either you can stop amitriptyline or you can continue amitriptyline as it is a small dose. <clears throat> so methadone, 5 milligram BD, uh, and uh, you have to continue the morphine. So 20 milligram Q4H on an SOS basis. The abapenin and uh, amitriptyline was uh, continued. And uh, this patient had a very good pain relief for two months uh, uh, till her death. Um, so methadone, if you use it properly in selected patients, uh, that is a wonderful drug which can give good pain relief uh, to maybe uh, 10, 10 to 15 percentage of patients. Okay, uh, this is another patient. A 40-year-old man with advanced malignancy of the lung with spine metastasis, metastasis and he had a T12 uh, spinal cord compression, um, and um, uh, for which uh, he underwent radiotherapy. Uh, and now the main problem is burning pain on both lower limbs, which is continuous in nature, and pain score is 9 by 10. Patient is on tab morphine, 40 milligram, 4 hour day. And uh, you want to convert this patient to methadone. What would be the equivalent, or what would be the dose with which you start this patient on methadone? Twelve milligram BD. Seven point five mg BD. 1.5? 7.5 mg BD. Okay. I can see different answers. 16, 12, 16, 8. Okay. Um, so let's see what should be the dose. So this patient is taking <clears throat> morphine, a total 240 milligram per day. Uh, what is the conversion factor then? If the patient is taking more than 200 milligram of oral motion, or if the age is more than 65 years, conversion factor is 20 to 1. So the total dose required would be 12 milligram of methadone. So you may give tab methadone 5 milligram BD or syrup methadone 4 milligram TID. Okay, along with tab morphine on a uh, 40 milligram on uh, Q4H SOS basis. Okay, there are uh, two websites uh, which I have mentioned from which you can get more information about uh, the medications which can produce uh, QT prolongation as well as cytochrome P interactions. Uh, so, in summary, uh, methadone uh, is a use useful medication uh, which can safely be used uh, in selected group of patients. So you have to find out 
uh, those patients uh, who are appropriate to start uh, methadone. So we uh, already told that methadone can be used as an adjunct. It can be used in patients who are in pain and having renal failure and patients with complex neuropathic pain, especially patients who have satanic malignancy or pelvic malignancy uh, who usually have neuropathic pain. Um, then uh, patients who uh, has uh, uh, pain refractory to other opioids, uh, patients who have opioid toxicities. So these all are uh, patients who are suitable uh, to start on methadone. <laughs> and uh, why methadone becomes uh, a good medication in this type of patients? Because it's a peculiar mechanism of action. It has three mechanisms of action. It acts on all the opioid receptors as agonist, and it has an MDA antagonistic action, and it also acts like tricyclic antidepressant. Um, then um, uh, um, a few uh, important points uh, which you need to keep in mind that the dose of methadone should not be increased every day. You should wait for at least five to seven days because that's the time required for the methadone to get the blood level stabilized. So wait for seven, five to seven days before you increase the dose of methadone. Uh, and there are many drug interactions uh, and uh, uh, the medications uh, which are uh, more important, uh, we have already mentioned, both cytochrome P inhibitors as well as cytochrome P inducers. <clears throat> okay, so um, uh, I have had people saying that uh, methadone should not be used uh, because it can uh, cause a uh, death of the patient. But um, uh, um, I can say that uh, if you use uh, a less amount of methadone, it can be safely used uh, in patients. Uh, and uh, uh, I think uh, um, when in 2018, when methadone was available, we started methadone only for uh, seven to eight patients because uh, we were afraid uh, to start. Uh, but uh, over the years, uh, we became confident. And uh, I think now we have at least uh, 40 patients who are methadone, who are on methadone. So thank you. If you have any doubts. Okay, the cost of methadone. <clears throat> uh, so um, it is almost comparable to morphine. And uh, if uh, the patient is taking uh, more morphine <clears throat> and if you convert it into equivalent uh, methadone, then the cost would be even less than the uh, dose that is needed for morphine. Okay, uh, how much dose can be increased after seven days? So this we already discussed. If the patient is taking less than 30 milligram of uh, morphine per day, then you can increase only five milligram. Okay, then once you increase the five milligram, wait for another five to seven days. <clears throat> but if the patient is taking more than 30 milligram, you can increase 10 milligram per day and wait for another <clears throat> five to seven days. Uh, how do we wean off patient uh, of methadone? Yeah, well, that's a good question. Uh, so, uh, like any other opioid, uh, if uh, they have taken opioid um, for uh, maybe more than two months, it is always better to taper uh, the dose and uh, stop. So, maybe <laughs> if the patient is taking um, 30 milligrams, uh, reduce it 
uh, five milligram maybe every two weeks and when you come to uh, maybe five milligram uh, then even uh, you can reduce it by 2.5 milligram and then to, to um, maybe on alternate days and store <coughs> Uh, opioid license is required for mother. Yeah, um, actually, uh, in India, uh, opioids uh, use is governed by NDPS Act, uh, Narcotic Drugs and Psychotropic Substances Act. And uh, as per NDPS Act, uh, they have uh, notified uh, six drugs, which are known as essential narcotic drugs, ENDS, E-N-D, okay, essential narcotic drugs. And uh, uh, these uh, six ENDs are uh, morphine, methadone, fentanyl, codeine, then hydrocodone and oxycodone. The last two are not available in India, hydrocodone and oxycodone. But the other, uh, other four are available. <clears throat> and um, if you have an RMI status, that is recognized medical institution status, and that's all what is required to get uh, methadone. You need not uh, have any other license or anything else to get methadone. Would you consider methadone as first line for severe pain? Yeah, um, so uh, usually methadone should not be uh, given in patients with acute pain because uh, we told that uh, uh, methadone will take about five to seven days. Uh, okay. Um, so usually it is not considered as a first line drug, but suppose if the patient has a very elevated serum yeah. creatinine, maybe seven milligrams per deciliter, and uh, you feel that, okay, um, uh, I will not be able to monitor this patient. Uh, and maybe in such situation, uh, I may consider uh, methadone as the first line. And the addiction associated with methadone. Yeah, that's, uh, uh, I think it is uh, less comparable to other opioids. And as I told you, uh, methadone is used as an oral substitution therapy to wean off the patient from other opioids. Uh, sir, Dr. Shrutika has asked do we eventually stop morphine or tramadol when methadone becomes effective, or are they continuing? Do we eventually stop morphine or tramadol when methadone becomes effective? Uh, yeah, uh, uh, so we are not giving morphine on a regular basis, isn't it? We are giving morphine on only on a soil basis. So uh, uh, maybe usually after five to seven days, most of the patients, um, they will not need uh, any morphine, uh, but we will keep it as an soil dose because we don't know when the breakthrough pain will come. So it is always better to keep uh, morphine as SOS. Uh, so tolerance does not uh, develop to methadone and actually uh, methadone is uh, a drug uh, which uh, we already discussed it will uh, prevent and reverse the tolerance because of its uh, action on nmda receptors Um, uh, Harsha, uh, your question is not uh, clear. Can you make it more Sir, clear? Actually, I wanted to ask that morphine we give QID dose, like every four hourly. It is, but 
फोर आवर मॉर्फिन मॉर्फिन हाँ क्यों आए थे Sorry, for ha. Huh, I wanted to say four hourly, but yeah. uh, I wanted to ask whether uh, it can be given like twice a day or thrice a day. Like one of my ah. patient is taking morphine tablet. Like we have advised every four hourly, but the patient is taking the tablet at ten a.m. in the morning and directly at night. Means uh, the uh, her uh, his daughter is giving it like that. So I told her that you should not do that because he he may be having severe pain, but he is unable to communicate with you. So I just wanted to ask whether that dose is uh, effective, sufficient, or uh, I should uh, insist that you should give a, a four hourly dose. Okay, and so for that uh, you have to first uh, first of all uh, talk to the patient and see whether uh, is he having pain in between. If she gives ten milligram BD or TID etc., uh, usually a uh, morphine uh, the pain relief lasts only for <clears throat> maybe for four hours, and it, it has to be given every four hours. But there are a few situation in which uh, morphine is given in a different fashion. Uh, suppose the patient has renal failure, so we might give it maybe uh, TID. Uh, or six hourly, or even once daily, <clears throat> uh, and uh, if the patient has uh, breathlessness, severe breathlessness, which is not amenable to conservative treatment, and in such situation is also morphine type of choice, <clears throat> and the morphine uh, in such situation will be given uh, maybe for uh, six hourly or eight hourly. So otherwise, uh, for continuous pain, morphine need to be given uh, around the clock. That means every four hours. So it is better to talk to your patient and see whether uh, how is his pain relief. And he says, "I am okay with the ten milligram BD, and uh, my pain is uh, completely relieved." And then uh, with twenty milligram pain relief, that means uh, that patient might not need morphine. Even you can step down to tramadol. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, psychological dependence, same as addiction. So, but uh, I told uh, was um, psychological dependence can occur with uh, any opioid, but it is less with the uh, methadone, and methadone is used as a uh, therapy uh, to wean off the patient from other opioids. Uh, uh, usually, patients who are uh, using Other opioids like uh, cocaine, things like that. Mm -hmm. And methadone is used as a substitution therapy to withdraw the patient from that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. drug abuse. Then I think uh, we have to wind up now. I have another session at seven. Thank you, sir. I think that message is for you. That was an excellent lecture. We have some confidence to start patron. Thank you, sir, from Ira Almeda. And thank you, sir, for the excellent session. Um, That depends. If you have any doubt, I think we can upload into the the Google page. Uh, our teacher Priya. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sunil Kumar, for that wonderful session about the wonder drug methadone. Uh, we do believe uh, at least some of you might be hearing uh about methadone maybe more for the first time, and we do hope that the session was very helpful to you. So, uh, with the promise that we'll be meeting in the next session with another uh, module on uh, pain. This is Sri Priya, along with Dr. Sunil Kumar, Dr. Arjun, and Mr. Anup signing off from the Tips Eco Hub. See you in the next session. Till then, everyone, take care. Stay safe. Bye bye.